Okay, this is another video just showing some progress on my Dreamcast engine and it's been probably about a month or so since I did the last video on the, the kind of dynamic lighting engine and I thought I'd make better use of it. So as you can see here we've still got the terrain as before but there's a structure so what I'll do for the moment is just turn the terrain off so we're just dealing with the structure. It makes it run a little bit faster, there's still some optimization to be done. But as you can see here, you've got a level which is a little bit like Wolfenstein. Uh, it's got textured floors and ceilings, but it's all kind of cube based. It's a little bit basic. It's kind of like Alien vs Predator on the Jaguar or Space Hulk, that kind of thing. And it's using a level of detail algorithm in there. So it's, it's been quite efficient with polygons and it's throwing away things it doesn't need. So there's a few glitches here and there. But if I turn the lighting engine on, you'll see that these these are meant to be lights. They're using the, the bovine texture from the cows, but they're meant to be lights. So you've got coloured lighting, and you've got lighting from this one, which kind of fades out, and the lights can move around. So it's all dynamic. But the one thing you'll notice is here, these are fairly simple lights, so the light is shining through that wall which if it was a real light it wouldn't do, it would be casting a shadow. So the third light which we've got through this corridor is rotating and you'll see this is casting light but it's also leaving shadows. So if I hide in this corner here, just turn around, you'll see the light is being blocked by this pillar here. So if we go a bit further forward, as you'll see, if I just raise the camera up a little bit, you'll be able to see that this, there's four pillars. Those two on the left are a bit wider, and the two on the right are a bit narrower, but this is casting light. So if I change the colour down a bit, just to make it red, it just stands out a bit more. Uh, so if we go down, there's no collision detection on any of this, so I can walk through walls. You'll be able to see that the lighting kind of lights up uh, anywhere where the, the object is. And what we can also do is move this light around, and you can see it's lighting up different parts of the, the area. So if we push it into this little corridor here, and just set it to spin a bit faster you can see whoops, that it's lighting as you'd expect it to so the light doesn't really spill uh, to the sides too much. So the other thing you can do at the moment this is it's got like a, a field of vision angle on it so the light isn't casting in all directions so I can bring that right down so it's only a couple of degrees or if I just slow this oops slow it down. I can bump this up so it's casting 360 degrees. So at the moment the rotation's not really too important. It's more that it's casting a light in every direction. So if I try and hide in this little area here, this alcove, you'll see so I can move the light around but there's a gap so if I start pushing this light forward, you'll see that the light kind of spills out. Now this isn't really anywhere near Doom 3 kind of lighting, it's making a lot of assumptions because it's on the Dreamcast, which isn't really that powerful, there's no shaders or anything. Uh, but what you can do is do fairly realistic lighting and make a game kind of like Thief or that kind of thing where you can say, well, a character is being lit or it's not or maybe the character gets damaged if they're in the dark or the light that kind of thing. So the other thing I can do is to put the bloom filter on which really it well it does hammer the frame rate quite a lot but what you'll be able to see there is the light really is kind of bleeding in the yeah, you can see it better there you can you can kind of see it bleeding around the the hard edges so the light there isn't isn't passing this wall 
but if I turn on oops, wrong one, I turned on the depth of field then. If I turn on the light bloom, you can see like in in the case of that it's kind of bleeding around because it's so bright. That <laughs> that really is quite bright. Uh so if I go around you can see the the blue light and that's kind of the effect with it off, on, and that's kind of with the depth of field which kind of breaks at the moment. So I'll turn that off. But yeah. So if we turn off the turn down the angle a little bit so it's probably outputting about I don't know 45 degrees something like that and start this thing spinning it's kinda of like a siren that's spinning round I could, I could there's an alert in a space station and this thing's kind of spinning round so you'll see here it's, it's casting shadows so at the moment the frame rate is okay with if I turn off the light bloom and turn on the frame rate it's doing about 30 frames a second if I turn off the lighting you're getting the clear 60 frames a second but without it's doing about 30 which is okay it's not not too bad if I back out a little bit uh, the way this works is if, you, if you're quite far away from the dynamic light the or the one that lights and, and does shadowing it won't cast it so the algorithm stops it just it just saves a bit of CPU but if I turn on the the light bloom you'll see there it really is making quite a big difference so the whole idea for developing this was that probably about 10 years ago or so I tried to make a, a top-down 2d game and this was before shaders were really popular and what I wanted to do is to just do like a dynamic lighting game and there have been a few examples um, but I just wanted to really take advantage of that and you know because you're using tiles you can do uh, ray tracing and so ray casting rather which is kind of like how Doom or, or Wolfenstein used to render its graphics so it's just casting out rays and if it hits a wall or anything solid it stops casting and it's quite a simple algorithm but it works really really well on the Dreamcast and by using that and having a light fall off you get quite a nice effect so I'll just try and slow this down and just demonstrate one last thing so if I turn off the light bloom this is just to show that the light doesn't just work within this confined kind of building area it will work on the terrain uh, at the moment the, the light isn't really being cast that far so it's it's not going to have a massive effect but you should be able to see it um, so what you'll also see here is the lights do interact with each other so if I back that off a little bit if I bump the the light down you'll see here that you're kind of getting red that's mixing with the yellow and you kind of get a white so it's just to show that the lights do interact with each other so if you had a red, a green and a blue you get a white light where they all intersect so let's just push this outside I'll turn the terrain turn that off turn the terrain back on there's a bit of a glitch because the terrain and this floor are at the same height so it kind of looks a bit weird um, but let's just push this out and turn the terrain on turn the angle up to full and then push this out in the terrain so I can imagine this being quite useful in a game where maybe you've got like a torch or you've got characters walking around with torches and they ooh, <laughs> I went a bit dark then the characters would be kind of casting light and you could do that with a fairly simple light but what, what I want them to be able to do is whenever you've got either hills which are a little bit higher or even just bits of the like wall or objects like that it'll still cast shadows uh, so I'll just bring that back there just to show it's like if, you, if you're inside the light Whoop. push it forward the light won't really 
light the outside so it'll, it'll look very you know, trippy if you've got got the light bloom on but yeah you'll see there so it's kind of lighting um, the terrain a little bit but not where the wall gets in the way in that case it lights the wall up so I'll leave it there so this has been quite a lot of fun to develop on the the Dreamcast and just to show that I mean that the Dreamcast really isn't as powerful as a machine like the original Xbox which has got shaders and it makes this thing much much easier to do and even the PlayStation 2 has got the extra um, kind of graphics hardware the what do they call it? It's like the VD0 and VD1 CPUs which are they're almost like programmable shaders but the Dreamcast doesn't really have that but by just thinking a little bit differently and having the ability to render to texture you can do some quite cool effects and do kind of light bloom and using simple things like tile based um, shadowing you can get some quite nice effects and build some quite powerful uh, kind of game mechanics out of it so I'll, I'll leave it there so thanks a lot for watching